honey, it's the fight, baby. I want your same old love, baby. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Um, I noticed that a lot of people are doing the review about the Netflix series uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, and um, it's it's very most of the content that I've heard has been you know pretty good regarding the situation. But I would like for any and everybody that is a listener or a subscriber. To my channel that is from Milwaukee because uh, I'm the same age as Jeff Dahmer and at the time where he did his damage throughout this city I was a health inspector so I'm going to ask everybody that remembers that situation that time where it was a 91, 92 somewhere around up in there to be a part of a live stream that I want to do regarding this subject I did a video before, and I'm going to put it back up because I'm going to do it as a flashback. Um, YouTube, you know, flagged it or demonetized it, I should say. How So, you know, I can just put it back up as a flashback. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to talk to all of us that remember that so vividly. Um, a lot of us has have our... PTSD triggered by watching this. I didn't watch anything but from Jeffrey Dahmer, except I watched the first four episodes of this. And it's amazing that one of my brothers said, you know, what he did, he was a monster. And I was like, dude, you know that's the name of the series? Dahmer, monster. I said, do you you know how cool? Because what he did to us in this town, y'all, we still haven't recovered from it. And I want y'all to know that because a lot of y'all are looking at it from a, you know, a shock, you know, value. And I and I can give a testimony that there's enough of that there. But just the sheer impact of the racism, the crap, the disrespect of the black community. And the poor people that lived in this community on the west side just has to be spoken of. How he was enabled, how he because he was white, my friend always say that lived um, in the same apartment building that he did, that he always looked like he was floating. <laughs> and my perspective was as an inspector that had been to that building. So many times, so many times, myself and my uh, partner, shout out to you, Lori, and we would speak with the manager and he would always say that they're working on it. We spent time in every each area for like about six months and something, and then they transfer you to a different area. And all we could do when we were on that side of town, which we call Little Beirut, is just wait until we got our transfer to be in a different area. <coughs> it was a lot of trap houses. Um, the whole area, I would say downtown, and it's starting from about 12th Street in Wisconsin and those streets like Wells, Clyborne, Kilbourne, all of them were, you know, a lot of trap houses. You could get all your drugs there. You could get heroin, crack, marijuana, whatever you wanted, cocaine. And Jeffrey Dahmer moved his ass into the middle of that and was able to just eat people and do the damage that he did. It was appalling for a lot of us, again, that had to work in that neighborhood because nobody did anything. Not I, my supervisor, not any of the other supervisors that uh, from the police department, 
because anytime you got a building that's constantly smelling like a dead rat and you can smell it in the alleys, you can smell it two and three blocks away. It should have been investigated. It should have been it should have tore down every damn thing in that neighborhood until they found out what the damn problem was. But that's not what they did. And I'm hoping that Tommy joined me on the um, I got a commitment from a few people. Uh, a lot of folks I know, Jeffrey Dahmer caused them to drink. Um, I have a friend that got killed because he um, he uh, um, says something about one of the police officers. Next thing you know, we knew he came up dead somewhere. That's another story. Another story. I knew Earl Lindsay, Tony Hughes, who was deaf. Anthony Hughes was a friend of my brother. My brother is no longer here. I met him through my brother. Um, Rita Lindsay, that was her brother Earl. That was put in an acid vault and was never able to be identified ever again. They didn't even get their family member back. They had number slush. I mean, I mean, oh, Janetta Robinson. A lot of y'all know Janetta Robinson. She's passed on now too. She ran the uh, neighborhood. Um, you know, she got a lot of accolades from the mayor and the president, and. She did, uh, what was that name? What was she had Victory? She had Victory Park. And the other one is a community service organization that had been there for 30 some years. She convinced the city of Milwaukee that they needed to just tear the building down. Her and, you know, she had a lot of pool because it did, it had become a tourist attraction. And people were coming from all over to see the building that Jeffrey Dahmer did that made him in. Club 219, where a lot of people would go there because they played so much good music and they had a good DJ. And it wasn't just gay people that went to the club. It was You went to 219 uh, to, to have some of the best music, the dance music. You went there if you didn't want to be bothered from... From straight men, if you were gay, and if you was, you were gay, you were right at home at the place. I told uh, Narob that it reminded me of tracks in uh, back in the day. I don't know if it's still open, but in Washington D.C., this was a club though that was mixed and. It had the best dance floor and the best music in Milwaukee. Jeffrey Dahmer didn't kill so many people that was at that damn place. It wasn't funny. You know, just talking about him opened up the PTSD in a lot of us. And this Netflix series is um, so far from what I see. It doesn't seem too much that they're focusing on the bodies, which I'm glad they're not. I feel that they're focusing on the enabling and, un and the no accountability and the racism. And to me, that's what it is. That's what Jeffrey Dahmer did to us. And like I said, we haven't been able to recover since. This town has not recovered from Jeffrey Dahmer doing that fuck shit he did up and down these streets. Everybody calling, telling the police that their loved ones is missing, but the police don't have nothing to tell you. Your friends come up missing, you ain't seen them. Then all of a sudden they went out and they gone. You know, or they left and the last time you saw them, they was with a, a blonde haired white dude. They ain't care. When you think about Conorak sent us some phone, a 14-year-old who he killed and drilled all that stuff inside his head, he was already on probation for trying to rape his brother. You see, this is the kind of racism 
that I'm talking about that just destroys people's spirits. And that is the goal for some of the dominant society to destroy our spirits. That's why I said we can't have this reverse anger. Um, you know, in other words, misplaced anger. The the killing that that white boy did to everybody in the community and was able to sit up there and live in, amongst the community is really kind of like a testament to how black people don't have the kind of nature like, you know, get out of here, white boy, get out of, out, you know, because that could have easily have happened. But it didn't. And everybody that got tangled up with him was not gay. Some people had addictions and they just wanted to take pictures and get a quick buck. Okay? And unfortunately, they, when people think that the white man's ice is colder, they would listen to him instead of being like, damn, you kind of stank a little bit. But because most of the people in the area, to me, was on the left foot anyway. It was almost normalized uh, for him to come and do what he did. To plant down his ass on the west side and then just start wreaking havoc on us. Ambrosia Chocolate Factory. They moved out to New Berlin somewhere else. They didn't shut the factory was there for I don't know how many years and how many jobs that a lot of people lost because we don't have a transit or a transport light trail like a lot of cities because of the racist governor. Didn't want us to even be able to tra uh, travel to the outlining areas where there was a lot of black people that worked in Ambrosia. And they was just out of the job because there is no way you can get out to certain areas unless you have light rail or if you have a car. If you don't, you know, so whereas Ambrosia was in the heart of the city, you can just get on the bus. I mean, it was just, it's just a lot. It's, it's a lot. And I'm hoping to be able to do some justice to the story. I want to do it live. I want to do it with people that remember, people that were there. People that um, lived in the building. Uh, Glenda is passed on now. Uh, but her nieces, I'm trying to get in touch with them because, as y'all know, I did the story before. And like I said, I'm going to put it back up for a flashback. And hopefully, because of the um, you know, attention that is garnering on Netflix, I'm glad y'all remember and I'm thankful for the people that are not letting it die because Jeffrey destroyed a lot of lives in this community. A lot of black lives in this community. And they didn't matter. They didn't matter at all. You know, so I thank Netflix for that uh, series. And it's the first thing that I've watched regarding Jeffrey Dahmer since he did that bullshit. You know, and y'all just excuse my French, but every time, like I said, I talk about him or I, even he's brought up um, because I was in the thick of it. It ain't like what I saw. I lived it. I've been to the buildings. OK, so um, I'm just saying a lot of us were directly affected by him. And I'm hoping again to get a lot of people from Milwaukee that and um, that remember that participated, that either lived in the building, um, to go live so we can have some support for one another. Because I'm sure that the Netflix special opened up a lot of wounds, because it certainly did for me. It certainly did. And this is not the kind of story, because now a lot of those people going on, this is not the kind of story that, um, you know, no disrespect, but that you can talk with a lot of the Gen Xers and or, or folks that wasn't there. Because like I said, I'm the same age as Jeff. So he would be my age at this time. 
But those of us in our 50s and 60s, we know exactly what the hell happened. Um, shout out, he's he's gone on. Detective Kennedy, who was also the detective when my sister got murdered, he was um, he's been in my home before interviewing us. He did the interview, the first one with Jeffrey Dahmer that allowed him to just quit the department. So there's a lot of information that I want to be able to bring about that situation while it's still cooking because, like I said, a lot of us was traumatized by that. And um, I try to get it out of me every chance I can get. But it don't matter because YouTube... <laughs> they censor it in me. I mean, they they don't they demonetize it every time that I do. But um, we'll see how it goes. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put the flash back up there with the uh, Jeffrey Dahmer video that I made quite some time ago, and I hope that y'all enjoy it. And please leave a comment below, okay? If you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share the channel. I really would appreciate it. Let's talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.